Hello. Now we take up refraction through a prism. So we'll just draw prism. Call the corners as A, B, and C. A is the angle of the prism. Angle enclosed by the two refracting sides is known as the angle of the prism. So you take an incident ray, say going like this. This is point of incidence. So you draw a normal to the point of incidence. This is 90 degree. This is point of incidence. This is one refracting side, first refracting side. You draw a normal. This is incident ray. So you will call this as say EF. EF is the incident ray. Okay. EF is the incident ray. EF incident ray. A angle of the prism. I have marked here. A is the angle of the prism. Now after refraction, the ray has to bend towards the normal. Because it goes from rarer to denser. We initially assume that. So this is the prism. The light goes from rarer to denser, it has to bend towards the normal. Let us say this is G, this one is G. So FG is a refracted ray, FG refracted ray. Then again this side, when the light undergoes refraction, it has to go from denser to rarer, it has to deviate away from the normal. So you draw another normal here, you see this is uh, 90 degree, uh, this is G you know, so you can consider this as H and I, HI is a normal to the refracting side AC at the point of G. It goes from denser to rarer, it has to deviate away from the normal. So let us say J, GJ is called as emergent ray. GJ you call as emergent ray. Okay. So extend the incident now. Uh, we have to find the angle of deviation. Initially the ray goes like this. Finally the ray is like that. So the ray has turned this much. So by what angle the incident ray has turned when it comes out of the prism that is called angle of deviation. Or you can simply say it is the angle between incident ray and the emergent ray, angle of deviation. So you draw the diagram incident ray, emergent ray, okay, call this as K. So I have extended the emergent ray, okay, this is called K. So, HGI is a straight line. Angle between the incident ray and the emergent ray, you call this as AL. This angle is called deviation. Angle between incident ray and the emergent ray is called deviation. Now, we have to get the expression for the deviation. So, what you can do, you know, deviation is equal to in this triangle FKG, triangle FKG, deviation is this angle plus this angle, angle 1 plus angle 2, exterior angle is equal to sum of the interior opposite angle and uh, this is angle of incidence, this is angle of emergence, these are angles indicated like this. I angle of incidence, angle between the incident ray and the normal, R1 angle of refraction for the side AB, angle between the refracted ray and the normal, for the side AC, for the uh, surface AC, this is angle of incidence. If you consider this surface or if you consider refraction through AC, then this is angle of emergence, refracted ray normal. Okay. Now deviation angle 1 plus angle 2 which is I minus R1, I minus R1, see this is I, this full angle will be I in that you will have to subtract R1 so that you will get this angle 1. 
so i minus r1 this angle 2 will be e minus r2 so add that is angle of deviation if you want you can even write the step before i uh, sorry this d angle of deviation is k f g angle k f g plus angle k g f angle k g f what reason you will give the exterior angle is equal to sum of the interior opposite angles right now this you can write as deviation is i plus e minus r1 plus r2 call it right now you consider this quadrilateral in this this angle 90 this angle 90 so angle a plus angle h should be 180 because the other two angles will be 90 degree each because there are perpendiculars drawn a f h g see the diagram very carefully so angle a plus angle h is 180 degree okay now what what you have to do consider triangle f g h consider triangle f g h in that r1 plus r2 plus h is 180 r1 plus r2 plus h angle h 180 degree what reason you will give sum of the angles of a triangle r1 plus r2 this r1 this is r2 please change it r1 r2 h r1 r2 h please make the correction so r1 r2 plus h 180 degree now comparing 2 and 3 there is h here there is h here there is 180 degree there is 180 degree you can say a is equal to r1 plus r2 angles and 4 now you come to this r1 plus r2 is here you know in equation 1 you substitute a substituting 4 in 1 substituting 4 in 1 you get d is equal to i plus e minus a this is the expression for angle of deviation okay one of the important uh, expressions you know this deviation as you see here this depends on angle of incidence this deviation for a given prism for a given uh, light angle of incidence depends on sorry angle of deviation depends on angle of incidence initially what will happen as the angle of incidence increases initially angle of deviation decreases reaches a minimum and then it starts increasing once again so if you draw id graph this is i this is d initially when the angle of incidence increases angle of deviation decreases reaches a minimum and then it starts increasing once again this graph is called as id graph or id curve very important curve now the lowest value of the deviation is called angle of minimum deviation angle of minimum deviation now you can see uh, for all other places for two different angles of incidence there can be a deviation there can be a single deviation for two different angles of incidence you can see this is one angle of incidence the other angle of incidence suppose if you want to consider this as i1 this is i2 for two different angles of incidence deviation may be same okay that is because suppose i keep allow the ray to go like this this is deviation now i use principle of reversibility i put a plane mirror here let's say then the ray will retrace the paths when the rate retraces the paths also same angle of deviation 
ray when goes like this angle of deviation the same ray when you send the uh, send it back same deviation so this i is i1 means this e will be i2 so deviation is same but what will happen at the minimum deviation you see there is only one point here so your i1 and i2 value become same therefore at the minimum deviation we can say i is equal to e and also we will have r1 will be equal to r2 will be equal to r so when a prism is set for angle of minimum deviation easily we can observe that i is equal to e and r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r why because consider the ray goes from this to this that is the refractive index mu mu is sin i by sin r1 similarly when you consider refraction on the other side mu is sin e by sin r2 mu is refractive index of the prism with respect to the surrounding medium surrounding medium so when you say i is equal to e r1 should be equal to r2 because mu is constant therefore we will have r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r now we can derive one more equation which gives you refractive index of the material of the prism with respect to the surrounding medium in terms of angle of minimum deviation so you know that see one more thing when you set the prism for angle of minimum deviation say i draw here imagine the ray will pass through the prism symmetrically this will be parallel to the base will pass through the prism symmetrically if you draw diagrams you know this i this e r1 r2 i will be equal to e, r1 will be equal to r2 equal to r continuing when the prism is set for angle of minimum deviation i am taking this and using capital d for angle of minimum deviation i plus e so i plus i 2i minus a which gives you i is equal to a plus d by 2 where capital d stands for angle of minimum deviation then you also know that a is equal to r1 plus r2 which is 2r assuming the condition for assuming that is uh, the prism is arranged for minimum deviation from this you get r is equal to a by 2 so from snell's law considerations we have mu is equal to sin i by sin r1 or you can say r because r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r no so sin i sin a plus d by 2 by sin r1 which is sin r so sin a by 2 therefore mu is equal to sin a plus d by 2 by sin a by 2 this is mu means refractive index of the prism with respect to the surrounding medium so that re refractive index value you have to put it here okay thank you